Last year I did the 75 hard challenge and it completely changed my life. And this year I decided I wanted to do it again, but for completely different reasons than last time. Most people that I see that redo this challenge do it because they want a restart or a refresh into their routines and their habits, as well as they want to lose back the weight that they gained since last time they completed the challenge, or they just wanna lose more weight. And while the first time around I did want to lose weight when I started started the challenge, I also really just wanted to learn to be disciplined. I had zero self-confidence and didn't have any trust in my ability to keep my promises to myself. I barely was working out, I ate fast food all the time, I pretty frequently was engaging in phone binging activities after I was done working for the day, and overall just didn't enjoy the concept of taking care of my body or my mind or just my general health. So after completing the challenge last summer, I had accomplished all of this and more by challenging myself more than I ever had in my entire life. And I ended up losing a little bit over 10 pounds, which was amazing for me. If you wanna hear more about my experience the first time around, I will have the link to that video down in the description box because today we're gonna be focusing on my second time completing 75 hard because I just finished it last week and I found the transformation to be completely different than the first time I did it. This time I really didn't care about losing weight. If anything, I was trying to not lose weight or keep on weight because I had actually lost a little bit more weight since I had finished the challenge last year. And I had already proven to myself that I was capable of doing this challenge, so that wasn't really a factor for me. But over the past year, I had found myself falling back into this state of extreme stress and not prioritizing my mental health, my physical health, and my emotional health on a daily basis. I was always exhausted and felt like I could never get enough sleep. And I had remembered that the first time I did the challenge, I actually felt more energy than I did when I wasn't doing any type of workout. I was back in the routine of choosing convenience over what's actually best for me, which led me to eating out more often and just generally making decisions that were more convenient instead of actually impacting me in a positive manner. Overall, I had really just started giving into my impulses again, which is not what I wanted to be doing. So really I needed to refine my skill of practicing self-discipline and strengthen it a bit more and start to make some of these things more of a habit and a routine for me instead of just something I did while on this program or challenge or whatever you wanna call it. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the program, I'm gonna quickly run through the rules of the program and then we will get into each one individually and how it was different for me this time around. And then we'll end with my overall transformation in terms of what changed for me and what my goals are going forward now. So the rules are two 45 minute workouts per day, one which has to be outdoors. You also have to have a gap in between these workouts. It's not super clear in the initial rule set, but you can't just do two 45 minute workouts back to back. Then you have to follow a diet which you pick and set for yourself. You cannot have any alcohol or cheat meals throughout the challenge. You have to drink one gallon of water every single day. You have to read 10 pages of a nonfiction book, and then you have to take a daily progress photo. So jumping right into it, the two 45 45 minute workouts starting with the one that must be outdoors. This time around, something was very different, which is I didn't do any walks in the rain. Last year, I did a lot of walks in the rain, so I was way more strategic about planning out when my outdoor workout was going to happen. I would check the weather every morning, figure out what the best time was gonna be to do my walk, and make sure I got it in before the afternoon thunderstorms that happen in Florida, which if you're noticing, it's starting to get darker and darker in this camera view. It is because that is currently happening and the sky is turning black right before my eyes. So. I had to be very strategic about that and I was way better about it this time around. I also aimed to do my walk earlier in the morning, right first thing when I woke up or in the evening around the time of the sunset here in Florida because it was really, really hot. And last time I had a lot of miserable mid afternoon workouts that sometimes would get cooled off by the rain. And this time around, I didn't want to do that. So again, I was way better at just planning things overall and starting to really incorporate in this lifestyle into what I already already had in terms of my obligations. Whereas last time around, I again was kind of more focused on what was convenient for me and just letting things play out how they did throughout the day. 
And the last thing I did differently with my outdoor walks this time was I started to try to do work on my phone whenever possible. If I was able to review a YouTube video while on my walk, I would. If I was able to do a work call while on my walk, I would. If I was able to send out some emails, I would. Anything that made it more bearable for me to get that walk done because as you're about to hear with my indoor workouts, I had started doing a very intense workout routine when it comes to aerial silks training. I had gotten super into aerial silks at the end of finishing the challenge last last year and went really full steam ahead this time around. So I was already working out way more than just 45 other minutes per day. My aerial sessions tend to be one to two hours a day. Sometimes they would even be longer than that. So doing another 45 minute walk on top of that meant that I was working out like an hour and a half to two and a half hours every single day which is a lot of time. So I needed to make the best use of my time that I could, which meant working while on my walks. So the indoor workouts. As I was saying, I really dove into Ariel this time around, which I found to be absolutely transformational compared to last year. Last year when I did the challenge, I was super focused on just getting the workouts done and I was not actually enjoying most of the workouts I was doing. I, again, right at the end started to do Ariel classes and was getting more involved in yoga classes and things like that through class pass but really I was not doing a lot. And if you haven't heard of Class Pass and you live in like a larger metro area, then I would highly suggest checking it out. I think I actually have some type of offer code I can give you guys to get free classes when you sign up. So I'll have that link down in the description if you're interested. But with Class Pass, you're able to take classes at a bunch of different studios in your area for actually lower than the studio cost. A lot of times it's around the cost of what you would pay if you actually had a membership at that studio. So I started doing that last time when I did the challenge. And this time I really dove into Ariel and actually signed up for some repeat weekly classes that I was on like a contract for. Like I had to be at the class, otherwise I missed out the money that I paid. Like I'm pre paying for being there every XYZ day of the week. So I was taking like four to five classes a week. And this was amazing because I truly enjoyed and loved the workouts and really dove into this idea of training and improving versus just trying to get the workout done and marking it off. So if you have not found a workout that you actually enjoy, I highly recommend trying a bunch of different things. I've been taking, oh my gosh, this storm is crazy. I've been starting to take ballet classes. I have done aerial silks. I have tried, I don't even know, a bunch of different things. Yoga, I've tried bar classes, I've tried Pilates. I've tried a bunch of different things to see what stuck the most for me and what I truly enjoyed. I've been debating trying an acro yoga class. Like I just want to get involved in whatever I can and see what I love best. Ariel is definitely my thing already, but I'm still trying other things because it's fun and it's a lot more motivating and exciting when you're actually excited to improve in a specific area, which for me, I found that weightlifting was something that I had grown out of loving and I just didn't really enjoy the journey of it anymore. So so I switched it up and found something that I enjoyed a lot more, which I highly suggest trying if you're really just not enjoying your workouts, which doesn't mean that you're always gonna love going to whatever that is. There's days where I just don't wanna go to Ariel at all and I'm exhausted. But once I go, I always feel a thousand times better even on the days that I'm just really not feeling it. Next section is following a diet. So this time around, I was a lot less strict on my diet for multiple reasons. And what I mean by less strict was I picked less strict of a diet. This time I did no fried foods, which was same as last time, but then I just did no traditional desserts. Last time I did no sugar, like no sugar at all. And if I had to add any sweetener to anything I was cooking, I only would use honey or agave. This time around, I did not do no sugar Sugar at all. I just did no traditional dessert. So I was able to eat something at a restaurant and not have to think, oh, is this going to possibly have any sugar in it? I would buy a barbecue sauce that had some sugar in it and it was okay. I did make a lot better choices though. And I got really creative with my diet. I started shopping very differently than I did last year. I didn't eat a bunch of salads and things like that, which I was very into last year when I did the challenge. I was eating a lot of carbs because I really needed the fuel. And I found that I had to eat way more this time around than I did last time because I was working out so much. Again, talking about how often I was doing aerial and how long those classes were. I wasn't just doing an hour and a half of exercise per day. I was doing like an hour and a half, two and a half hours in a day on a daily basis. So I needed a lot of fuel. And so I was eating a lot. <laughs> 
I tried a lot of different recipes. I was making baked oats all the time and just finding different ways to have things that I wanted to have and to be able to kind of indulge in my cravings in a healthy whole food type of way. So I was way more focused on whole foods and just eating what I needed to fuel my body and got way better at listening to my body and what it actually needed, which is something that I've now been able to continue doing since I finished the challenge. Although I am struggling with it a little bit because I wanted to, you know, have a break for a few days and be able to kind of eat whatever I wanted to eat. And I was extremely nauseous and I've been like sick for days since I got off the challenge because I ate some fried food, I ate some sweets and my body is not taking it very well. But yeah, I was indulging way too much because I was like, yay, I'm done, even though I didn't really care about doing that. But that's a story for another day. I am back on to just my normal diet and not viewing it as a diet, but just what my body needs. So I'm focusing on like, what do I want right now? What is my body telling me it needs? And not what am I like craving or like what sweets am I in the mood for? It's like, what do I actually need right now? And even with all of that and eating way more and not having my diet be as strict, I still lost 11 pounds. So I lost basically the exact same amount of weight that I lost last time I did the challenge. And I feel like I ate way, 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 way more, but I was working out way more. But I also was just eating way more carbs. I was eating less just like salads and things like that. So yeah, it's just interesting to see how different it was in terms of how I was eating and how I still literally lost the same amount of weight. And I was actually trying to not lose weight and I couldn't not lose weight, which was wild because I had been struggling to lose the weight that I had gained during COVID. And while I was on birth control, I I gained like 20 pounds. I'm gonna take a sleeping pill in my birth control, which it is the last birth control, my last blue one. I might not take another pack after this. This might be my last pack. I haven't decided yet, but I've had some pretty bad side effects. I felt like at least from my birth control, not sure if it actually was, but I did gain a lot of weight after I started it. I've been a lot more moody, had more anxiety, uh, more like depressive episodes in general and had some other issues too. But I also have gone through a lot of change right at the same time that I got on birth control. So I got married, moved to a new place started a new job. I mean, everything changed. I'm not really sure how to feel about it, but I don't know. I might stop it, might not. And I was struggling to lose that for so long. And this time I was like, I don't wanna lose any weight. I'm fine with how I am. And I was starting to not be able to wear any of my clothes. And yeah, it was just a pain, which I know probably people are gonna be like, man, that's a good problem to have, but it is, but it's not. <laughs> Anyways. Next one, no alcohol or cheat meals. This was way, way, way easier this time around. Last time I found that with just the cheat meals in general, like going out to eat with friends or going to a birthday party or going to a holiday or a vacation, I was like struggling. Like I felt like my whole thought process the whole time was always like, oh, I can't eat this, I can't eat that. And something I noticed this time around is that because I'd already done the challenge before, it wasn't as novel to people. So it wasn't coming up in conversation all the time when I would be at gatherings or be going out to dinner. People are just used to it. Now I am someone who doesn't just eat a bunch of sweets and who eats generally healthier and doesn't order fried food all the time versus before my friends and family viewed me as someone who loved fried food, ate a ton of French fries, always wanted dessert after I ate a meal. And that has shifted, which has helped because I found that when people were super fixated on the fact that I was doing the challenge and I was restricting myself, they wanted to continuously bring it up over and over and over, which made it harder on me because then I'm constantly thinking about it as well. So this time around, I was much more quiet about it, didn't bring it up. And if it came up in conversation, I'd just be like, oh yeah, I'm good. I don't even notice. I'm not even thinking about it. Like I don't even want X, Y, Z, or I, I don't eat that, you know? And just focusing on this is my identity, not, oh, I'm doing some restrictive challenge right now. And oh, so many, this many days are left and then I'll finally be done. Of course, there were still conversations that were had that were along that train of thought, but in a general sense, that adjustment and that change in the way I talked about it to others helped in the way that they talked about it to me and made it a thousand times easier. The best scenarios I had were actually when people would buy things or make things that were within the way I ate and they'd be like, oh my gosh, Paige, I made this or I bought this and it actually is something you can eat. Like it doesn't have sugar in it. Or it's not fried or whatever. And they were more viewing it as like this plus of like, oh my gosh, you should try this. Or I made this because you inspired me or whatever versus, oh, you can't eat this. Like, I'm sorry. Like, well, what if you just ate a little bit? Or what if you had this instead? Like constantly trying to make it work for me. 
it, it was just such a shift and such a different conversation, which really, really helped. Drinking a gallon of water every day. <laughs> so overall, I still struggled to finish my gallon of water like a few hours before bed, which was my goal this time. I wanted to not be drinking it at like 11 p.m. or midnight, because then I was up peeing all night and I was up just trying to finish the water, which means I wasn't getting as much sleep because I was getting up early pretty consistently on a daily basis for work and other things. So this time around, I still struggled with that, but what really, really helped me was I bought a half gallon water bottle, which I have it right here. This one's super simple. It's at five below. I'm sure they have one also on Amazon. I'll look for a similar one and put it in my Amazon storefront for you guys. But it literally changed the game because this time around, I was just drinking a whole lot of these before like halfway through the day because it's there and it's always full versus last time I was drinking out of a 24, 25 ounce water bottle and I had to fill it up five times per day. This only have to fill up twice. So in the morning, first thing I would do, fill this up, drink it throughout the day, drink it during my meetings. It had a straw, which made a big difference because I could just like be on a call and just continue talking versus like unscrewing a cap, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, this made a huge difference and I recommend this to literally everyone. And now I just, I'm the person who brings this everywhere. Everywhere I go, I go thrifting with a friend. I have this in my cart. I go to the grocery store. This is in my cart. I go out to eat. I bring this into the restaurant. I've literally brought this into the restaurant and opened it up and poured it into an empty cup so I can still like know how much I'm drinking. But now I don't do that, of course, but I still just bring this everywhere because you drink so much more water if you have a huge thing of water with you at all times. It just really helps. So that was a huge game changer. And I also have some other essentials or things that I highly recommend having for the challenge or just my overall favorites that I use in my Amazon storefront. And I also have a list of all of my favorite books, the books I read last time and the books I read this time doing the challenge. So if you want any of that information, just head down to my description to get that link. But again, I'm not trying to gatekeep. This is literally from Five Below. It was $5. So go to Five Below, buy this water bottle if you have a Five Below near you. If not, I will link the cheapest half gallon water bottle I can find on Amazon for you guys that has like a similar spout and things like that. Speaking of books and my favorite books, the next thing is reading the 10 pages of a nonfiction book every single day. This time around, I really enjoyed the books I read a lot. Like I really, really enjoyed them. But the thing I will say is I had picked some actionable books, things that had a lot of takeaways that I wanted to start implementing. And I really did not have the capacity to implement them while I was doing the program. It was just too much for me to try to be doing all of the tasks of the program. And on top of that, try to implement a deep work habit, which is one of the books I read, Deep Work by Cal Newport. Highly recommend that book. It was amazing and just really helped me think about focus and productivity in a completely different way. So highly recommend reading it. It has inspired my deep work chamber that I created in my closet in my bedroom, which stay tuned. I've had that shown in some of my YouTube shorts. So if you haven't seen that, check some of my shorts to find it. I'm sure Alice will put something up here for you guys to see that. But but I just wasn't able to implement it in the way that I wanted. I was, I was really focused on getting through the program. And although things became routine and habit and easy, it still was a lot, mainly just that 45 minute walk extra on top of all of my aerial training was just a lot. The other books I read were Psychology of Money, which is another amazing book. Definitely recommend reading that if you are someone who struggles with money concepts. It really helped me see things from a completely different lens and realize that money is not black and white and our money habits are not black and white. Definitely worth reading. Building a Second Brain, another amazing book with a ton of takeaways that I wanted to implement, but it was just too much. I slightly implemented things from both Deep Work and Building a Second Brain, but I haven't done it to the extent that I want to because I was so focused on just getting my routines and habits built up with 75 Hard. So that's another thing to remember is that you are literally building habits. They say to focus on one habit at a time, right? You're building like seven habits, really five of them are more like daily habits. You're building like five habits all at one time and you can't fail and miss any days. Otherwise you have to start over. So it is hard to do that and try to incorporate in other new things that you're learning or other new habits. So give yourself grace and you know, I recommend these books and I loved every single one of them, but 
consider that if you do read them, you're going to want to like take good notes and highlight a lot in them so that you can come back to it and revisit it after you're done unless you're just a superhuman, which I'm not. So I could not do that. I am now excited to go back through them all though, look at all my highlights and just pull out the key points that I want to implement and get those things implemented and start trying them out. And then the last book that I was reading when I finished, which I'm almost done with, is The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Really interesting book if you're into marketing and just overall research. It has a very research focus to it. So I found it very, very interesting. Not as much of an actionable book. So could be a good, interesting read if you are into marketing, social media, uh, keeping an audience's attention, anything like that. And there's a lot of other interesting parts about it. It's just like why things stick or why things become trends in a sense. And then the last part of the challenge was taking the daily progress photo. This for me this time around was a lot harder. I think because I was more used to these habits and routines because I had done them before, I was less fixated on making sure like, oh my goodness, I need to get every single thing done. And on day 21 or day 20 of my first time starting this challenge this year, I forgot my progress photo and didn't even realize until the next day, like halfway through the day, I was like, oh my gosh, I never took my photo. So I had to restart the challenge. I took a few days off and restarted it and then did the full 75 days in a row without any mess ups or fails. And that time I reset up the reminder on my phone where it sets a notification reminder every single evening at 9 p.m. saying, take your progress photo so that I would not forget it and accidentally go to sleep. And then I never forgot it again, but I'm very grateful and happy to be done taking the progress photo because I just don't really care about the progress photo anymore because I'm not focused on trying to improve my physique or lose weight or anything like that. I already know I'm like making a ton of progress. I still want to take progress photos every once in a while because I am building muscle from Ariel and I want to be able to kind of see that over time because I find it really fun to just see your progress in a physical way. But I am really focused on just strength overall and doing Ariel has made me way more aware of how my strength improves over time because I'm doing skills that require me to like fully lift up my body weight. So I'm focusing on that and happy to be done having to remember to take a progress photo every single night. So that is each item overall. And now I want to just get into my overall conclusions, my biggest takeaways from doing the challenge a second time. So the first time I finished at the end, I was really exhausted. And while I am tired and I was, you know, ready to sleep in and not have to worry about doing two workouts in a day after, this time around, I felt very energized and very just excited to work out on most days. That was not the case for me last year. I think I overall have just improved my ability to exercise a lot and my physique, or I don't know the right phrasing for any of this stuff, is just way better. My cardiovascular health is better and I'm able to do more, which is allowing me to have a lot more energy. I'm also eating way more carbs, which is giving me more energy versus last year when I was eating salads and, you know, trying to eat a lot of veggies, which are still important. I'm way more focused on just making sure I get in enough calories and fuel my body because of how much energy I am exerting. I'm also really ready to just continue to take on new challenges. Last year when I finished, I was like, yes, I'm done. Let's rest and just, I don't know, do nothing. Like I wanted a vacation. I wanted to just sleep for days and I just didn't, I wasn't like, excited for what's next. I wasn't like, okay, now what? I was like, okay, I'm done. And then I did try phase one last year. I was like, okay, I guess I'll do phase one, but I didn't want to do it. I wasn't excited to do it. I wasn't looking forward to doing it. I really just wanted an equilibrium. I was like sick and tired of trying new things. This time I'm like pumped to try new things. The day before my last day of the challenge, I took a ballet class for the first time and then went to a infrared sauna, which I had never done before. And I want to try going to a zero gravity tank or whatever those are called the like salt bath tank things I don't know what they're called I want to try that I am just trying as many different classes and things that I can and I want to try a bunch more challenges so I am going to be starting a lot more type of challenge video content and just talking about my experience doing it and seeing how the different challenges that are out there transform my life because this was such a life-changing program for me and I know there's so many other ones out there that I am just really excited to try. So then what is coming next? What does that look like? I really want to do the couch to 5k challenge. I want to try the project 50 program. I want to get into a deep work habit and routine in the way that it's discussed in Cal Newport's book. I want to actually build out my second brain and get that going and see how that 
completely overhauls my life and my productivity and my brain capacity in general. I want to try joining a co-working space and working there and seeing how that changes things for me and a ton of other things. Overall, I've realized from doing this program and completing 75 hard two different times now that I am just on a journey now of wanting to continuously prove myself wrong and stop believing these lies that I tell myself. I've really started to see the importance of that identity shift that can happen if you truly believe that you can do something or you truly start to tell yourself that I'm a person who works out every single day. I'm a person who gets up early. I'm a person who doesn't drink coffee. Whatever that looks like for you, telling yourself those things and actually believing that makes it actually part of your identity and completely changes the way you act in what you do and the decisions you make on a daily basis. This is all information that I actually first read about in Atomic Habits. I know a lot of people have read that book. I'm actually thinking of rereading it now because I'm seeing how transformative the identity shift concept really is. And I'm also realizing that I have proved myself wrong and completely proved these lies I was telling myself wrong for so many different areas of my life. And there's so many other lies that I've told myself my whole life that I'm ready to prove wrong as well. I mentioned the Couch to 5K challenge. The reason I wanna do that is because I've been telling myself since literally like middle school PE that I suck at running and that I will never be a good runner and that I will always hate running and that running a mile for me is just gonna be terrible and there's no way around it. And since doing this challenge and doing the daily walks, there's some days where I've actually jogged a little bit during the walk, which is sounds insane still to me because I've not made that identity shift, but I'm ready to prove that wrong and actually start to run and learn how to run. And I wanna do a 5K. So I am planning on doing the Couch to 5K challenge and taking away that identity of, I suck at running, I'm a bad runner and saying, I'm capable of running if I put my mind to it. And if I train, I will be able to do it. The reason I took the ballet class is because I've always said, I suck at dancing, I can't dance, I hate dancing. And I'm ready to prove myself wrong with that too. I used to always want to do ballet. I tried taking a class in high school as well as college. And both times I felt so uncomfortable and just self-conscious that I stopped taking the classes because I just, I felt like I was so bad and so not graceful. And I'm like, you know what? It's just about consistency and continuously doing something. I'm not gonna be good on day one. Natural talent is not something that you're gonna have for everything. I can't read music on the piano, so I stopped playing piano. So I'm gonna learn to read music. I've been telling myself for years that I just can't read piano music and I'll never be able to no matter what I do. These are all just lies that I've led myself to believe by consistently telling myself and telling others these same statements over and over. And 75 Hard has taught me that even if you're telling yourself that, it literally doesn't matter. It can still be a lie and you can still overcome it and prove yourself wrong. So that's what I want to do. The biggest thing that helped me overcome this concept was realizing how much progress I had made doing aerial. I was taking progress videos throughout the entire time doing the challenge this time, as well as just when I first started aerial, I would try to always take at least one video of myself doing a trick every class I took and seeing that transformation from my first class to now, and I will put up some videos so you can see, is absolutely crazy because I always wanted to do aerial. And when I started, I was so determined to get good at it and having 75 hard as a backbone of keeping me continuously taking classes and continuously training really changed the game because I truly believe that if I had not been doing this challenge and I tried to do aerial back in the day, I would have said, wow, I'm really bad at this. Like everyone else is better than me and I'm never going to improve. So why am I even trying? And now I have seen through consistent effort how it really does make a big difference. And now I have people who say to me in class, like, how long have you been doing this? I feel like I am just not able to do X, Y, Z move and I'm never going to be able to do it. And I tell them I was terrible at all of this. My first class, I couldn't do I couldn't lift myself up at all. I was extremely unbalanced when I was in the air. I had no flexibility. I was so tight, so weak. I never had arm strength ever growing up. I've always been a legs girl. So it was a struggle for me. And now I am the person that people are like, oh my goodness, how are you doing X, Y, Z? And it is the most wild thing to think about how far I've come when I only started in October and where I'm at now and seeing how much, again, consistent progress just transforms your life in so many different areas. And so 
I'm ready to take that principle and apply it to all areas of my life, not just fitness. And I'm excited to take you guys along with me. So definitely subscribe if you want to see other content similar to this, where I talk about my transformation and show more of the in-depth of exactly what I'm doing, because I've been sharing my journey of quitting my nine to five job and building a business, which is really at this point, just been freelancing for myself and making money doing that and being able to work for myself and have this flexible schedule. And that was a whole mindset shift that I had to overcome of, you know, whether or not I'm capable of making money for myself. And it was the consistent effort and continuously trying and having that identity shift and saying that I do this. I, I'm building my own business. I'm making money for myself and I'm someone who's going to, who's going to do it. And I am now someone who does it. And I had to make that identity shift. I also need to do that with YouTube. So if you want to watch, uh, watch that happen, I'm going to be starting to tell myself that same thing that I am a YouTuber and I make money from YouTube and it will be my mainstream of income one day because that is my overall goal. So stay tuned, stick around if you want to see all that happen, but let me know in the comments down below if you are doing 75 hard or if you've done it before. And I'm especially curious for people who have done it twice. Did you notice a drastic difference in the transformation you had mentally from the first and the second time you did it? I'm really, really curious if this happens for other people too, but that is all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching and following along and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Where you on my side?